my friends, this is Miss Hill with your very first knowledge lesson of the year. I am so excited to get started. Our knowledge lessons this year are going to be divided into sections called domains. Our first domain is about fairy tales and folk tales. We're going to start with fairy tales, which are my favorite. I love listening to fairy tales, and I'm sure that you guys have heard a lot of fairy tales as well. Some popular fairy tales include Sleeping Beauty and Cinderella and The Little Mermaid. Let's talk a little bit about fairy tales and what they are. Fairy tales often start with the phrase, once upon a time, or something similar. When they end, they usually have a happy ending, and often they will end with the phrase, they lived happily ever after, or something similar. Fairy tales also often feature some kind of magic or a person that has magical powers. They also feature royalty or members of a royal family, like a king, a queen, a prince, or a princess. We are going to read a fairy tale today. As we read our fairy tale today, I want you to listen carefully and see if you notice any of those characteristics. Remember, fairy tales usually start with once upon a time or something similar. They usually have a happy ending. They usually have some kind of magic and royalty in it in some way. See if you can see which of those traits you can see in our fairy tale today. The fairy tale we're reading today is called The Fisherman and His Wife. This fairy tale comes from Germany, which you can see here on the map. It was originally told by two brothers known as the Brothers Grimm. In our fairy tale today, there will be a fish. This is a picture of an actual fish that you might see in real life. But fairy tales are not true stories and they often include things that could not happen in real life. So the fish in this fairy tale might act a little bit differently from a fish you have seen in real life. Before we start our story today, I wanna to go over some of the words that you might hear in it that you might not know the meaning of. The first word that I wanna talk about is charming. If something is charming, it is very pleasing or appealing. For example, the family stayed in a charming little cottage at the beach. Enchanted. If something is enchanted, that means it was put under a magic spell. For example, Ruby knew she was in an enchanted forest because there were jewels growing on the trees. Hesitated. If you hesitated, that means that you stopped briefly before you did something. For example, the dog hesitated before going outside in the rain. Might. The power to do something. Force or strength. For example, the boy tried to open the door with all his might, but it would not open. Displeases. Displeases means to be unhappy or bothered about something. For example, it displeases the baseball players when their game is canceled because of rain. Displeases has an opposite word or an antonym. An antonym means the opposite. The antonym of displeases is pleases. The word pleases means that it makes you happy or it's something that you like. When we put dis in front of a word, it means the opposite. So while pleases means to like something or be happy about something, displease means to be unhappy about something. Let's go through some examples and see if they are things that would displease you or please you. Let's see if your family is having your favorite meal for dinner that would probably please you. If you miss the bus to school, that would probably displease you. If your best friend invites you over to play, 
that would probably please you. But if it starts raining on a Saturday afternoon when you had been looking forward to go to the park, that would probably displease you. Take a minute to think if you can think of something else that would displease you. All right, we'll start our fairy tale now. As you're listening, make sure you're paying attention and, and listening for examples of characteristics of fairy tales. So remember, our characteristics are that they're not true stories that don't happen in real life. They often feature a royal character. They often feature magic of some kind. And they usually have a happy ending. Here we go. Once there was a fisherman who lived with his wife in a little, old, run-down hut by the sea. Every day the fisherman went down to the sea to fish. You can see their house way in the back of this picture on those, on those hills. One day, as the fisherman sat looking into the clear, shining water, he felt a strong tug on his line. He pulled and pulled with all his might or strength until at last out flopped a large golden fish. Then, all of a sudden, the fish spoke. Please let me go, said the fish. I am not an ordinary fish. I am an enchanted prince. Put me back in the water and let me live. So the fish is claiming that he's actually a prince under a magic spell. What do you think? Do you think he's really an enchanted prince? Let's find out. Swim away, said the fisherman. I would not eat a fish that can talk. At the end of the day, the fisherman went back to his wife in the little old run-down hut. Didn't you catch anything today? she asked. No, said the fisherman. I did catch one fish but he told me he was an enchanted prince and asked me to throw him back. So I did. You fool, said the wife. That was a magic fish. You should have asked him for something. Like what, said the fisherman. Go back and ask him to change this dinky hut into a charming cottage. The fisherman did not want to go, but he did not want to argue with his wife either so he made his way back to the sea. When he arrived, the water was no longer clear and shining. It was dull and greenish. The fisherman called. Hear me please, O oh magic fish. My wife has sent me with a wish. The fish swam up to the surface and asked, what does she want? She says she wants to live in a charming cottage, said the fisherman. Go home, said the fish. She has her cottage. Do you think the wife will really have a charming cottage? Do you think that the fish minds granting this wish? The fisherman went home. Sure enough, there was his wife standing in the doorway of a charming cottage. The cottage had a little front yard with a garden and some chickens and a goose pecking at the ground. Inside, there was a living room, a kitchen, a dining room, and a bedroom. Wonderful, said the fisherman. This is sure to make you very happy. The fisherman's wife was happy for about a week. Then she said, husband, I am tired of this tiny little cottage. I want to live in a big stone castle. Go and ask the fish to give us a castle. But wife, said the fisherman, he has just given us the, this cottage. If I go back again so soon, he may be angry with me. Go and ask, said the wife. The fisherman shook his head and mumbled to himself, it's not right. But he did as he was told. Why do you think the fisherman thinks his wife's new wish is not right? Do you think maybe she's being a little bit selfish? 
When he reached the sea, the water had turned from dull green to dark purple and gray. The fisherman called, Hear me please, O magic fish. My wife has sent me with a wish. When the fish swam up, the fisherman said, My wife wishes to live in a big stone castle. Go home, said the fish. You will find her in a castle. Do you think the fish is happy about granting this wish after he gave them the cottage? Why do you think the water is changing color? Think on it for a minute. When the fisherman got back, he could hardly believe his eyes. The charming cottage had been replaced by a large stone castle. A servant unrolled a drawbridge for him. The fisherman went across the bridge and into the castle, where he found two servants sweeping a smooth marble floor. The walls were covered with beautiful tapestries. Crystal chandeliers hung from the ceilings. His wife stood in the center of the room, next to a table piled high with delicious foods. Now indeed you will be content, said the fisherman to his wife. Do you think she's going to be content? Or happy? Let's find out. She was happy. Until the next morning. As the sun rose, the fisherman's wife poked her husband in the side and said, Husband, get up. Go to that fish at once and tell him that I wish to be queen of all the land. Heavens, cried the fisherman. I can't ask for that. Go and ask him, said his wife. The dejected fisherman walked to the sea. Dejected means sad. Why do you think the fisherman is sad? Do you think he's happy making all of these ridiculous wishes for his wife? This time, the water was black. It bubbled and it gave off a foul smell, which means that it stunk. The fisherman hesitated or paused and then called, Hear me please, O magic fish. My wife has sent me with a wish. The fish swam up and asked, Now what does she want? With his head hung low, the fisherman said, My wife wishes to be queen of all the land. Go home, said the fish. She is already queen. The fisherman went home and found that the castle had grown even larger. It had two tall stone turrets on each corner and a crimson flag flapping in the wind. Two sentries in suits of armor stood at the door. Surely his wife would be satisfied now. They escorted the fisherman inside, where he found his wife sitting on a high throne studded with diamonds. She wore a long silk dress and a golden crown. In her hand, she held a scepter studded with rubies. On one side of her stood barons, dukes, and duchesses. On the other side stood a line of ladies in waiting, each one shorter than the one before. So, said the fisherman, now you are queen. Indeed, said his wife haughtily. Haughtily means rude and proudly. Well then, said the fisherman, I suppose there is nothing more to wish for. But that very evening, as the sun went down and the moon began to rise in the sky, the fisherman's wife sent for her husband. What do you think the wife is going to ask for next? And do you think the fish is going to grant her another wish? Husband, she bellowed, it displeases me that the sun and the moon will not rise and set at my command. Remember, if something pleases you, it makes you happy. So if this displeases her, it means it makes her unhappy. The wife continued, go to the fish and tell him that I must have the power 
to make the sun and the moon rise and set whenever I choose. See that it is done immediately. The fisherman walked back to the sea. He felt sick all over and his knees knocked together nervously. At the seaside, thunder roared and lightning flashed. Huge dark waves crashed on the shore. The fishermen had to shout, Hear me please, O magic fish. My wife has sent me with a wish. The fish swam up and asked, What does she want? The fisherman replied, My wife wants the power to make the sun and the moon rise and set whenever she chooses. Take a minute to make a prediction. Do you think the fish is going to grant this one too? The fish only said, go home. And so he did. There he found his wife sitting in the old rundown hut. And there they lived to this very day. Hello everybody! We just barely finished our very first fairy tale. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the fairy tale that we read. So I'm going to ask you some questions about it and we'll see what you can remember from the story. While I read the story, there were several times that I asked you to make a prediction and guess what the fish was going to do or what the fisherman's wife was going to ask for. The first thing that I want to know is, were your predictions about the magical fish correct? The very first time I heard that story, I predicted that the fish was lying to the fisherman and that he didn't actually have any magical powers at all. So my prediction was not correct, but you guys might be better guessers than me and you might have guessed correctly about the wishes that the fish did grant and the one that he didn't. I also want to know, who did the fish say he was when the fisherman first caught him? That's right. The fish said that he was actually a prince. When the fisherman went home to tell his wife, his wife started making wishes. Do you remember what she wished for? I remember that she wished for a charming cottage, a big stone castle, to be queen of all the land, and to have the power to make the sun rise and set each day. She asked for the charming cottage first because she wasn't happy with where she and the fisherman lived at the beginning of the story. Where did they live at the beginning of the story? They lived in a tiny hut and she wanted a bigger castle. Was the fisherman happy about asking the fish for all of these wishes? How do you think he felt about it? Do you think he was okay with it, or do you think maybe he was a little bit embarrassed to ask the fish? Do you think he thought it was wrong to ask the fish for so much? I think it probably was, and I think he felt bad asking the fish. While he asked the fish for more and more wishes, the water around the fish started to change a little bit. How did the water change? The more wishes he asked for, the murkier and stormier the water got, the darker and stormier it got. How do you think, knowing this about the water, how do you think the fish felt about granting the wishes? Do you think he was happy to do it? I don't think he was. I think he was probably kind of upset and annoyed with the fisherman's wife for asking for all of these things. Last thing that the wife asked for was for the power to make the sun rise and set every single day. Did the fish grant that wish? No. What happened when the wife asked for that? What did the fish do? He put them back in their tiny hut. They no longer had a big stone castle or a charming cottage. The wife was no longer queen of all the land and she didn't have any special powers to make the sun rise and set. They were back to where they started from. 
All right, my friends, I want you to turn to whoever is with you, whether it's your neighbor or your mom or your grandpa or a cousin, whoever's there with you. And I want you to think about the next question and talk about it with them. I want to know, do you think that there was a lesson in this story or something that was that you were supposed to learn from the story? I'm going to give you a few minutes to talk about that one. I think there is a lesson to this story, and I think it's that you should probably be happy with what you have and not continually ask for more and more and more. All right, my friends, before we go on to our next thing, I want to review our fairy tale characteristics that we talked about. Let me move a little bit closer. So we talked about some characteristics that most fairy tales have, not all, but most have, is that they start with once upon a time. Did our story today start with once upon a time? What about a happy ending? Did it have a happy ending? Not really, huh? Because they wound up right back at the beginning. What about a royal character? Was there a royal character in our story? Who was the royal character? The fish. Was there magic in our story? Yes, the fish had magical powers. And our last one is that fairy tales are fictional, so they're not real stories. What well, lets you know that this story couldn't happen in real life? There was a talking fish, and there was magic. And those things can't happen in real life. So we know that this story was fictional. All right, my friends, we're going to talk about our story just a little bit more. And then I'll tell you what we're going to do next. When we talk about our story, I want to talk about the different parts of a story. And our first part is the title. The title of this story was, of course, The Fisherman. And his wife, who if I went over the line, that's okay. The Fisherman and his wife. Our next part of the story is our characters. Characters are who the story is about, or who is in the story. Who are characters in that story? We had the fisherman, of course. We had the fisherman's wife. And we had the fish. Our next part of the story is the setting. The setting tells where the story takes place. Where did this story take place? You're right. This story took place near a lake. Did it take place anywhere else? The fisherman's house. Our last feature of a story is the plot. The plot tells what happened in the story. Our plot can be divided into three different sections. The beginning, the middle, and the end. What happened at the very beginning of our story? What was the first important thing that happened? The fisherman He caught a fish, but was it just any fish? No, it was a magic fish. Oh. Almost skipped the letter. The fisherman caught a magic fish. What about the middle? What happened in the middle of our story? In the middle, his wife started asking for wishes. What wishes did she ask for? She 
she asked for, I'm gonna kneel down so I can keep writing. She asked for a charming cottage a big stone castle to be queen of all the land and for the power to make the sun rise and set. Oh, if we had a lot happen in the middle, I almost couldn't fit it all. What about the end of our story? At the end of our story, the fish didn't grab the last wish, right? And the fisherman and his wife ended up back in their hut. All right, so now this chart that we have ha tells us all of the important parts of the story that we just read. What we're going to do next is you're going to fill out a chart just like this with all of the details of this story. But you are going to do something kind of fun. You get to change one of these details that we wrote down. So maybe instead of a fisherman, maybe he is a race car driver. Maybe instead of a fish, he meets a magical zebra. Maybe instead of wishing for a charming cottage, the wife asks for the biggest chocolate cake you've ever seen. Or maybe at the end, the fisherman does grant that last, the fish, sorry, does grant that last wish. You get to choose which detail you're going to change. I'm going to show you how to to do that and to submit it to me in just a minute. All right, we are back on our Google Classroom page. What you're going to do when the video is finished is click on this document right here. This is a PDF. When you click on that one, up at the top, there is this tab that says open with. We want to, open. when we open this, we want to click on annotate with Kami. Kami is the program that we are using to grade all online work for this year. Kami allows me to see how you completed assignments and be able to give you a grade. There are lots of tools on Kami that you will be using. The most common that you will be using in, the, in knowledge are the drawing tool and the text box. The drawing tool will allow you to write or draw to create images, and the text box allows you to type out your answers. For our assignment today, we probably want to use the text box. The assignment is to fill out this chart just like the one we did on the board. So our title was The Fisherman and His Wife. Our characters were The Fisherman. The Wife. And The Fish. Remember, our setting is where it took place. Oops. It took place near a lake and in the fisherman's house. I'm going to go pretty quickly through this one. So in the beginning, the fisherman caught a magic fish. Let me scroll down a little. In the middle, the wife asked for a cottage, a castle to be queen, and to make the sun rise and set. And at the end, they wound up 
back in their hut. What you are going to do when you fill this out though, is you are going to change one of the details. Just like I said earlier, so you might change the fisherman to a race car driver, or you might change the fish to a, mm, I said zebra, but let's go with a monkey this time. Instead of near a lake, maybe it took place in a desert. Maybe instead of catching a magic fish, the fisherman raced, raced a magic horse. You get to choose which detail you're going to change. When you have filled this entire worksheet out with your changed detail, at the top, I can't see it on mine because I'm a teacher, but yours will have a button up here that says submit or turn in. You are going to hit that button. Then when you come back to Google Classroom, it should show as turned in. And when you are done with that, you are done for today. All right, my friends, we will see you tomorrow.